In just a couple of months, Salim Mahaja will embark on his boldest international projects yet. Multi-billion dollar residential real estate developments in Dubai, Hong Kong and Singapore. It's ambitious, but ambition has never been a problem for the 30-year-old who grew up on the streets of Lidcombe. Although at first glance it might appear he has achieved the Australian dream with a collection of luxury cars and a portfolio of lavish properties, in recent years that dream has become a nightmare. Salim Mahaja has become Australia's most controversial businessman with accusations of corruption, dodgy dealings and even assault. Then there was that video. Find the material in these videos offensive. Tonight, in this exclusive interview, Salim Mahaja sets the record straight. This is Mahaja as you've never seen him before. Candid, modest, and ready to move on with his life. So it all started with this lavish wedding. What did you set out to achieve? With all honesty, I just wanted to give her that most amazing wedding imaginable. And in hindsight, I actually feel to this very day that it was that fairy tale wedding she always wanted. And yes, though, that is where it all started. Do you have regrets? I can cop the helicopters, the road closures, but really, fighter jets? Hey, Dale, I actually love fighter jets. Let's not go there. But look, with all honesty, what I do regret is perhaps not taking legal action earlier against the media, and I believe that would have stopped them from the ongoing rubbish that was said about me and my family that hurt so much because it was so fabricated. Again, the road closures on the other hand and the landing of the helicopters and the, the fighter jet, as we were saying earlier, that was all nonsense because I already had the approval and I gained that approval from council and the Civil Aviation Authority. You cannot just land a helicopter in a public place or fly a fighter jet. And this is what led to the public inquiry, of course that found me not guilty of any misconduct. And of course, this cost the taxpayers $1 million just to conduct the inquiry of Auburn City Council. So Salim, why has it taken you so long to respond to all of these allegations? Look, I really never felt the need to explain myself to anybody, but when it reached that point where I was getting harassed by the media on a daily basis, affecting my family, my loved ones, and even disrupting my business, I thought to myself, okay, enough's enough. I'm taking a stand. All the unwanted attention, it could not have been easy for your wife. Absolutely not, Dale. I mean, it was so difficult for her, but think about it. How would anybody feel having media camp outside their house? And for us, they were outside our house every single day, literally, for one and a half years straight. I mean, at times she would lock herself in a her room and just watch the cameras and seeing if they're outside and it didn't even give her privacy or she couldn't even go outside for fresh air. How long were you a councillor for and what other political positions did you hold? I was a councillor for four years. Out of those four years, I was a deputy mayor for four years in a row. And I was the treasurer for one year for West Rock, Western Sydney. And I was part of many other government bodies. So you grew up in Lincoln, in Sydney's Western suburbs and you now have moved to the east. How's that going for you? Oh, the move was great. The real main benefit was that uh, I didn't have to suffer the media frenzy. And to this very day, they've only been to my house once, which is great. In comparison to being to my house every single day for the past one and a half, two years. Do you blame the media for your marriage breakdown? Look, Dale, I'm not somebody to point fingers or blame somebody else. I'm responsible for all my actions, but I must say, the media is responsible for my breakdown. Look, what they try to do is simply to ensure that no female likes me, or they will turn on me, uh, no investor to invest with me, and of course to paint this picture in front of judges and magistrates that my credibility is, is appalling and it's not right because I'm not this human that they're painting me to be and it's all wrong. Can you give us some examples? Well, Dale, where do I start? I mean, one example would be that lashing out video where they kept replaying the footage over 18 times in just that one segment. That right there is military tactics at its best. The incident only ever occurred once and it was in the heat of the moment, but still they kept replaying it to destroy my credibility. Now, before my wedding, as bizarre as this may sound, we have never had a single fight.
that video. Do you regret that? There is no escaping it. If I can say anything about my actions, it would be that I was so crazy in love with this woman. You have to remember, Dale, this woman was not only the love of my life, but was also my best friend and the mother to be of our children. I was so frustrated that even she was manipulated by the media and I couldn't comprehend to why she would take their side over mine, even though we had spent seven solid years together. So how did it end up in the media? Well, unfortunately, one of Aisha's friends got a hold of that video and later on sold it for financial gains. So your family are very dear to you and it must have been pretty difficult for them. What did they make of the video along with Constance, the lady who was pretty close to you in that footage? What did they make of it all? My parents were so disappointed in me. I felt like I really did let them down. At, at the start, they didn't want to believe it was their own son. And for Constance, despite watching it with her mother, she still allowed me to explain myself and was able to look past it. And that's what makes her so special to me. So where does Constance fit in the life of Salam Mahaja? Well, I can only hope that one day she does play an important role in my life. A current affair ran a story on your arrest in Ibiza. We begin with the unfolding story on Salim Mahaja. Tonight, exclusive video of the disgraced former deputy mayor being handcuffed and arrested by police. It's the latest in a growing number of incidents that have rocked Mahaja's credibility. Alison Petrowski's just filed this report. Oh, Salim, what have you done now? Handcuffed on the side of the road in Ibiza by Spanish policemen. He and his mates are escorted into the police vehicles. Salim and his friend seem to think it's all pretty funny. Busted. Yet Salim doesn't realise the whole thing was being captured on camera. But Salim didn't even make it to the clubs before he landed in hot water with the local cops. A current affair has obtained this footage. We understand the arrest took place on Friday evening, Spanish time. They are first approached by two policemen on foot. At first it looks civil, but soon one of the policemen becomes more animated. Salim tries to intervene, gesturing wildly. It doesn't seem to work. He then tries showing the police something on his phone, but again to no avail. Eventually, police vehicles arrive on the scene. Salim and his mates are then frisked, then arrested. Can you tell us what that was all about? That story turned out to be a complete setup. No surprise. One minute I'm sitting in a taxi, and the next I'm arrested, handcuffed, and taken to the police station. And when the cameras are suddenly off, they let me go. It didn't make sense until this came out. Me puedes explicar por qué arrestaste al empresario australiano y a sus amigos? Nos ofrecieron mil euros a cada uno por llevarlos arrestados en presencia de las cámaras y dejarlos libres en cuanto llegásemos a la comisaría. ¿Quién te ofreció mil euros? Un australiano llamado Bobby. How do you feel when you watch that? It really does disgust me, and it has to stop. I've never felt so violated or bullied in my entire life. This comes to show how much they want to bring me down and destroy me. It seems like everyone wants a piece of you. Even Channel 7's most controversial reporter, Brian Seymour, who ran a story on one of your developments. Hoping to transform this into this multi-million dollar mansion locals describe as a monstrosity. Can you elaborate? Well, Brian Seymour recently ran a report about a home I suppose he wanted to build overlooking Canada Bay. For a start, the home is not owned by me, but by a company owned by one of my sisters, which I'm not even a shareholder of. Fact is, I already have a DA for a two-story home, and Brian knew this, but failed to mention it on air. He also failed to show the drawings of that home. How can you be so certain he knew you had those approvals? Because he sent me an email asking me to provide evidence, which I did. As you can see, all the existing approvals with the council for this property was sent to him and he completely dismissed and ignored them. 
He acted irresponsible by running that story and ignoring the real evidence I provided. As he asked, of course, all I was doing was changing the facade of the home to make it more contemporary. His failure to mention all this comes as no real surprise to me. A lot of media channels refer to you as disgraced former deputy mayor. How does that make you feel? Well, it would have had been better if they didn't call me disgraced deputy mayor. But then again, I ask myself, under what circumstances or basis do they call me disgraced? I mean, no adverse findings were found during the public inquiry. I was cleared of any wrongdoings. The state government was ordered to pay for all my damages. And what about the widely publicised story about being sued for the shrinkage of units with one of your developments? Again, the media just tell half the story. The half that sells newspapers, of course. They forgot to mention, when we sat down to mediate with Mr Tran, he withdrew the case based on advice from his very own counsel. He was even ordered to pay my costs. And the $97 million debt for Skypoint Towers? Look, I, I can't talk about this too much because it's quite a lengthy and complex discussion and topic. However, anyone with the slightest knowledge on business will understand how absurd this is. I mean, I could have a billion dollars in there, but what any wise person will understand is one would need to assess the net position. They need to assess the equity in the project and they need to assess the overall asset position of this transaction. Now, any investor prior to lending this sort of money will, ha will have had carried out their due diligence and that would conclude if the project will be feasible or not. And clearly in our situation, the project will, is feasible because nobody would lend this sort of money. Simple as that. Tell us about the various administrators and receivers that have been appointed to a number of your companies. Look, it's clear that a lot of people don't understand what the definition of administration and or receivership is. Now, many may think the company has failed or the company is uh, running insolvent. Now, that is not the case. And I can confirm that I've placed companies into administration and or receivership to ensure that every person aligned or assigned to the company uh, achieves the best possible outcome. Now, I've done this in the past purely because I was sick and tired of illegitimate uh, creditors coming forward and saying I owe them money and trying to fleece me. So I thought that was the best solution and I think it's running very, very smooth right now and all the companies I am operating are running just fine. There is a current matter before the courts involving an electoral scandal. These are very serious charges. Are you not worried you may receive a jail term? Look, I, I answer this question with the utmost respect. And I mean, to answer nice and brief, my answer would be, no, I'm not concerned about going to jail because I know of my actions. I mean, nobody would know the case like myself. I mean, I'm the person who ran the campaign. I ran the election at the time and I'm aware of what I did. And there's nothing I did in order to rig the election. So again, my blunt answer would be, no, I'm not concerned. And the reason is because I'm aware of my actions and I know I did nothing to rig this election. I keep hearing about these stairs. What's the latest on this $1 million staircase battle? Look, because this matter has been released, I cannot speak about it too much. However, I can confirm that this matter has no relationship to the stairs. The media knows about this. However, they clearly have put the stairs as the headlines because the stairs of the home has received a lot of controversy in the past year and a half. And it's all about ratings for the media. So it is what it is. But again, misleading information at its best. You told me earlier today that you have a charity. I never would have known. I've never heard it mentioned in the media before. Oh uh, yes, this is my non-for-profit organisation, which is my charity. Uh, it's been in operation since 2011. I've been the president of this association since 2011. And I have raised self-funded, that is. I don't charge membership fee, nor do I ask other persons or parties or members for, for funding of any sort. And till this very day, I've raised and donated approximately $1.67 million. Salim Mahaja, thank you.